We live in a time when bad news are good news and yet, logically, would very bad news be also very good news in the end? So an exit of Britain from the UK would in the end could prove to be very positive for financial markets and stocks because that would mean that central banks would again try to prop up markets. This bizarre reality is a sign of central banks having disturbed the natural functioning of markets. The mechanisms of financial markets have changed. The price still represents supply and demand, but the price, uh, the, the very level of it and the valuation metrics of certain investments such as bonds do no longer reflect economic fundamentals. This is simply because central banks do not pursue the same goals as normal bond investors do. They like to have cheap financing rates for governments and um, corporations. If you look at BMW in Germany, uh, investors give pay money to lend money to BMW. So negative rates in corporate bonds for or some corporate bonds for the automaker. So central banks do not worry about what is the fair value of bonds. This leads to a perverse distortion of market functions. Everyone who expects the treasuries and bonds will continue to go higher and break out of their recent uh, month, lo month long uh, consolidation patterns must at the same time assume that the world economy is not really strong enough to digest any normalization of monetary policy by the central banks. And those investors are in a winning position. Ten-year uh, German government bonds, the Bunds, rose by 6% year-to-date. Um, the DAX dropped by, uh, if you take into account uh, today's drop, uh, dropped by 10% since the start of the year. The delta between that is 16 percentage points, and that's a major delta. A new, um, yeah, new direction, a new trend um, in U.S. Treasuries and German bonds will only be possible if central banks will normalize monetary policy again. And that uh, they will only be able to do so if the world economy is stable again and is growing again and is strong enough to digest higher rates. From a short-term perspective, it can be dangerous. Um, to try to go long the term in bonds. That's at least uh, what Jeff Gundlich, the bond, bond manager, says. A famous influential hedge fund manager in, in the, uh, out of the US says that short-term long trades in German bonds are dangerous because you have to rely and find someone else willing to bid even for higher bond prices, which means that you need to find someone who is willing to buy bonds at even more negative rates. When it comes to seeking direction, uh, Jeff Gundleck says that um, the Fed is completely lost. Um, according to him, central banks are now losing control and they do not know what to do, just like the Republican establishment and Donald Trump, or the Republican establishment with Donald Trump. The Fed is confused and their confusion spills over to investor psychology. In the last trading minutes, the S&P 500 sold off um, uh, yesterday. So just before close, it uh, yeah, went into a nosedive. That same counts for the Nikkei in Japan. Um, it's down um, around 3% this morning. So very negative um, uh, yeah, markets from, from uh, Wall Street and from Asia, which spills over to European markets once again. Gav uh, Jeff Gunlick says that the Fed recently changed its tone so frequently, it seems um, every other week the message is different. Uh, they've turned into the zombie Fed, as Gundlach puts it. In reality, it is really so that only six um, members of the, um, of the Open Market Committee of the Federal Reserve believe that there will be one rate hike, only six of them. Um, and so the average of that um, uh, rate hikes that are still to be expected is between one and two. At the start of the year was between two and four. So they've dropped their forecast massively. And so some in the markets believe that um, before the elections, there will be no rate cut at all. Or of course, a rate hike, <laughs> not a rate cut. Thank you.